Hello Minions, Wheezy here, and today we're going to talk about the fastest ways to rank up and unlock attachments for your weapons in Cold War multiplayer, and the game modes specifically that I found are the best for doing that. And I was really not only surprised by the results, um, but also found out which game modes were the most fun to play, which is important in a game like Cold War. Um, so, let's go break it down! Okay, so we can actually uh, go right into the multiplayer menus here, and if you scroll over to Barracks and select Combat Record, you see it breaks down by multiplayer and zombies. I have not touched zombies yet. If you click on multiplayer, up at the top you see you've got a breakdown by weapon, equipment, you can go over here to game modes, and it will show you a full statistical breakdown of these game modes. I'm going to walk you through kind of what I did um, and why uh, I think the data here isn't as important. I haven't done like an exhaustive like thousand round trial to s definitively state here's why this is better than uh, that. <clears throat> but what I did do is play a decent number of games of each of the core ones that I thought were uh, actually worth your time. Uh, and you'll notice that combined arms I did not spend a lot of time in, nor did I spend much time in fire team. It did not take long for me to uh, realize that those weren't the best way to go. And I'll explain why as we go. But the core of what I'm trying to do here is help you guys save time uh, playing Cold War, so if you want to rank up your weapons and unlock those silencers and unlock your uh, different perks for your normal progression, and you don't want to spend a bunch of time grinding, uh, especially not if you are like some of those people who think that combined arms or domination are the best ways to go. Not only will that not rank you up as fast, but you will have less fun in my experience, because the way that Cold War is kind of built right now, that's actually not a... Uh, <laughs> those, those game modes just aren't playing very well. Um, so to start out with free-for-all, um, I'll just kind of briefly look through these before we kind of break them down, but um, I, I will do a separate video for tactics on how to play free-for-all, um, but like I said, even in my bad games, if you look down there where the one's lower on the graph, 319, 288, 212, that's my score per minute for those games when I probably only got 10 or 15 kills, and uh, free for all is a 30 kill game, first to 30 wins, and if you're in the top three, you get a quote unquote win. Um, but I found that my average score per minute was 543, using some some very simple tactics. I'm not like the best gun skill in the in the world, um, and I'll like I said, I'll do a separate video for free for all tactics. But uh, 543 was my average score per minute there. Domination was 293. Domination was surprisingly. I mean, I mean, you can see the inconsistency there through score per minutes, and a lot of that is because you guys have played Domination, right? Sometimes you get on a team that doesn't want to capture objectives, that sucks butts, you guys get spawn trapped. The, the inconsistency in that brings the overall score per minute down pretty drastically, and if you look at the best games I had in Domination, like the one that's above the average is a 347, a 313. Free for all, my, one of my worst games was a 319. Like, 212 was my, like, absolute bottom game. And... You know, 212 would have been a decent game in Domination. Uh, team Deathmatch was about 325. I was surprised. I thought Team De Deathmatch wouldn't be quite as good, um, just because it tends to be a little bit campier mode in Call of Duty. Um, people, since there's not an objective to speak of, people tend to be a little bit more campy in Deathmatch than they are in, like, Kill Confirmed. Kill Confirmed was more consistent for me, because it's a mixture of killing and... Uh, objectives with kept collecting the tags. It keeps people moving around. Kill Confirmed is one of my favorite game modes. It's a lot of fun, um, and it's more consistent. But you look there, the numbers, you know, 240, 420, 350, like, it was pretty consistently around that number. Um, Team Deathmatch had a little bit more variation, and some of those it counts even though if you drop into a game late, but, um, you know, so it skews the average a little bit. But these were matched with how it felt playing the games as well as the length of the game. But it just doesn't compare to free-for-all, especially if you you know, do well or get close to the top of the game. And then we get down to like Combined Arms Domination. Now, I didn't play many of these for a couple of reasons. One, Combined Arms matches are long. And despite the fact that there's like 24 or more people in some of these matches, the maps are so huge, you will run, you know, for a minute and a half across the map, <clears throat> get sniped, respawn back at your team's spawn, run for a minute and a half across the map, maybe kill one or two people. If you're lucky, you'll get on a three or four or five kill streak, but that'll take you like two or three minutes because of how big the maps are. So I just found that combined arms both in assault and assault was better because it forces people more into into predefined areas. 
but it's the same issue. You have to run so far just to get there, and the score per minute is lower. And we'll kind of break that down why, you know, as we go through these other categories, there's more categories in here. But fundamentally, you will spend a lot of time playing these game modes, and not a whole lot will happen. And when it comes to ranking up, that's not a great thing. Fireteam Dirty Bomb, despite how hectic it is, it's still kind of the same thing, especially if you have a crappy squad. Like, maybe if you're someone who has, like, a squad that you roll with, and all four of you are badass, and you drop into Fireteam Dirty Bomb, and you plant every bomb, and you win the game, like, maybe this will be the best play for you. But let's be honest, if you're stomping with a organized squad you don't need this video <laughs> right if you just want to hop on call of duty for 30 minutes 45 minutes and and make the most of your time ranking up you should play free for all and uh, we're going to break down a little bit more why that is so um under we're going to break down just here and go through these different categories a little bit score this is your overall score now if you look at that last game the last game i played a free for all i got 1650 was my overall score but the guy who won that game won it so fast, that game was super short. So I was like third or fourth in that lobby. Um, and I only had like 11 or 12 kills. And the guy who won had 30, right? So my score per minute for that was still 436 because the game was over so fast, right? Like, so it, the score can be a little bit misleading. Score per minute is the important one. I had a couple, you know, like I said, bad games in the middle there um, where I only got about 2,000 total score. About 300 score per minute, but look, those score per minutes, 319, 288, look at domination, my good games, 340, 450, look at my good games of free-for-all, 890, 725, 832, it's just, there's just no comparison, uh, eliminations, so the kill streak kills don't count towards your overall uh, winning the game, right, you have to get 30 kills with either grenades or, or your primary weapons, um, and so some of these games I got 32 kills, 32 kills, 38 kills because I had, you know, attack helicopters and, uh, well, actually, maybe the attack helicopters, I don't know, maybe they don't count towards there. But anyway, they kill people. So I guess maybe your kill streaks don't count towards your overall score, but um, that kind of is that discrepancy. But look, even my bad games, 14, 18, 15 kills, 27, 30 kills if you're close to the top, as opposed to, let's go down to domination there, right? Like, there's a good domination, I got 40, but 20... 7, 15, 8, it's very inconsistent, and also just, you know, I'm, they last longer. Domination games tend to last longer than free-for-all games, too, so you take the same, you know, a comparable number of kills, and you spread it out over a longer period of time, and it, and it just doesn't quite work out, as far as the math is concerned. Team Deathmatch, it's about kills, right, so there, but look, the lower kills, like 16, 18, 14, because your entire team is slaying, and, you know, the average eliminations there, what, 15, 19, 24, right? Kill confirmed, average eliminations, 16. Um, I, you know, again, these are only one game, but, I mean, look, I got 17 kills in that game, and the score was 2,700, and the score per minute was only 156. So 2,700 score, which if you look at, like, a domination, um, you know, when I got, like, a 2,900, that was, like, above average, and that was a 313 score per minute. Right, so 2,900 was a 313 score per minute, and Dirty Bomb, a, uh, or Combined Arms, yeah, what, a Combined Arms, a 2,700 was 156 score per minute. The games are just so much longer, and everything's so much more spread out. Fire Team Dirty Bomb, uh, you know, th this, you just, because it's a bit of a cluster, you, you'll get some kills, but again, you spend most of the time running across the map, collecting uranium, it's just... It's just not gonna. It's just not gonna crank up, right? Like I said, if you jump in there, you know, 12 kills, 1700 score, 100 score per minute. Like, again, just doesn't add up. So let's uh, kill death ratio doesn't really matter. But I mean, if you look at their domination, if you get a crappy team, you kind of get stuck in a spawn. So much more inconsistent. Domination is very team dependent. Team deathmatch, you can be a little bit more consistent. How well you do doesn't necessarily depend on your team. Kill confirmed, as far as your overall kill death ratio and stuff like that, again, doesn't necessarily matter as much, although you may lose games if your team's not collecting tags. Um, damage doesn't matter at all. Uh, wins, losses, this is kind of a good example, right? Because if you look at these, kind of the win-loss distribution is, you know, kill confirmed was a little bit more win than loss, but it's otherwise kind of like 50-50. Um, that was a win, you know? And it's just... So it doesn't necessarily matter whether you win or lose in these. They're, they're just kind of scores are inconsistent. But if you look for domination, right, the losses versus the uh, kill-death ratios as well as versus the score, you know, as opposed to the wins, um, 
like, yeah, like I said, just inconsistent. And with the connections and everything like that, I think that you'll find the domination is just... Domination has traditionally been one of my go-to modes, kind of a good way to get people gather around points to, to get some kills. Um, there you'll see the difference between some of the winning games and some of the losing games. Like when your team just won't cap with you, you can't get captures because it's you versus the entire other team. Um, obviously there's no objectives in Free For All or Team Deathmatch. In Kill Confirmed, I'm surprised that the Kill Confirmed doesn't count collecting tags as objectives. I thought it would do that. Anyway. So yeah, to, to kind of add on to this, um, with the overall way that Call of Duty Cold War is playing right now, um, especially and with the score streaks the way that they are, uh, domination is the biggest offender as far as where you get to the end of the game, and a lot of people have helicopters and airstrikes, and it becomes kill streak palooza at the end of a domination game. Especially if you're on a bad team, your team will get fucking hammered for like the last three or four minutes of the game, just absolutely destroyed. Um, and and again, if if you come at this where you're playing with an organized team, then you're not having an issue with getting high score games. Um, obviously, you couldn't take a team and do a free for all. So if that's if that's something that you're doing, then you guys will have to figure out what's best for you. But just for the average player who just wants to hop on and try and rank up a gun, like say maybe you're like, okay, you unlock this new gun and you want to get that silencer for your MP5 because I believe the silencers are gonna like they were in Modern Warfare gonna be the meta. It, you know, anytime you're not using a silencer, you're just ringing the dinner bell and. Uh, and people are going to show up, especially in the in the larger team modes. In free for all, I uh, experimented a little bit with and without silencers, um, because if the idea is to help you rank up weapons, then you don't necessarily want to say, well, if you want to do well in free for all, you've got to have ninja and you've got to have um, ghost and you've got to have a silencer, because by that point you've already got everything ranked up. So maybe that's less helpful. Um, but I found that in free-for-all, actually, it's not as big a deal. Especially because ringing the dinner bell in free-for-all is not a huge thing, because if two or three people come in, first of all, free-for-all means that they can third-party each other. So they're not all focused on you like in a team game. If you show up on the radar in a team game, then three people who are on the same team are going to fucking shoot you in the face. Um, free-for-all, not necessarily the case. In fact, in free-for-all, sometimes when you're holding out an area, you kill someone, if you show up on the radar, it'll pull other people in, and then you can start killing more people. Whereas if you're um, silenced, um, I still think it gives you an advantage uh, where you can choose your engagements, uh, but it might make it a little bit slower. People aren't necessarily running to you. So depending on your gun skill, um, that may or may not be a, a, a thing that, that you really want to happen. The point being, uh, I think even, and like I said, I'm going to do a video on this specifically because I have not been a big free-for-all player in any Call of Duty, and finding this out in Cold War has been like, man, I need to play a lot more free-for-all. And I found that I really enjoyed it. There, there seemed to be a lot less bullshit. There wasn't all the killstreak spam. It was just, like, it was just fun to play. And and some of the people in there, because it's everyone's team, like, everyone, the, the chat is just everyone all the time, right? So people are just talking in the lobby, which can be irritating, but you can mute people, or it can be fun. Um, so I'm going to do a separate video talking about free-for-all and tactics for that, just because it's something that I haven't really addressed, and probably a lot of people don't play a whole lot of, but... I think that should probably change, um, especially when you're trying to rank stuff up so that you can go take it into the other game modes and have, you know, if you want to play Domination, you're going to have a bigger advantage. Um, same thing for Team Death, all of the all of the 6v6 game modes. If you have Ninja, Silencers, Ghost, you're going to have a much better experience. I'm already seeing that as I'm starting to unlock Silencers. The, I started getting better streaks in Domination, in Kill Confirmed, when I unlocked Silencers for my weapons. So... So yeah, I guess without digging too much more into the nitty gritty of that, this is what I've experimented with. This is what I found. Um, I think you guys give it a try and you're going to see too. Like I said, even in, even in free-for-all, even if you're not great at free-for-all, even if you're not going to be at the top of the lobby getting 28, 29, 30 kills every time, um, if you get 15 kills in the time it takes for a free-for-all to end, you're going to basically be on par or above where you are for an average game of any other game mode. And I just, there's mathematically, as an engineer, I just can't really argue with the data. So I'll, maybe I'll do an update to this uh, after, after I play more. I spent basically an entire day playing Cold War uh, for like six or eight hours, <laughs> which I kind of didn't want to. But then once I got into free for all and I found that I was having success and that I was having fun, I was like, I'll just do one more. I'll just do one more. I'll just do one more. 
because in addition to having fun playing the game, I was unlocking all kinds of stuff for my guns. It was just like every, like I would, especially the low level guns, like when I'm first ranking it up, because it slows down as you go along. When you're at low level, you're unlocking three or four attachments per game. And I'm ranking up super fast. What am I at right now? 34. You know, I mean, you, what, where's my what, my, my overall playtime? Uh, does it even say in there? That's game modes. Multiplayer, time played, six hours. Okay, so six hours, 41 minutes of actual play time. And I'm a level 34, which some of that was balanced between those, but I'd brought, you know, it's going pretty fast using free for all as one of the core modes for that. Just this, my overall score per, per minute is 352, which has been pulled up because of um, the free for all stuff. If I play more, as I continue to play more free for all and less domination. To address that real quick, I think that score is going to come up is what I was going to say in the rest of that sentence. Real quick, let's address Domination. Domination's always been kind of a go-to for me. I feel like it's ruined in Cold War. I think Domination is broken. I think it's irritating. I think it's frustrating and infuriating. I think the connection problems as you're trying to attack and defend objectives, being shot around corners is way worse in Domination because teams tend to set up along a line. Um, it makes it way worse. And then the score streak system with everybody kind of getting their stuff at the end of the game, especially since it's like an, a reverse Robin Hood, like in with the score streak system, the rich get richer, which means if you're in a domination game where your team's not doing well, the other team will not only be slaughtering you and the connection advantages will be furiating and all that stuff and your team won't be capturing points and you'll just be constantly on the back foot. In addition to that, in the last like three or four minutes of the game, you're going to get fucking slaughtered by score streak after score streak. There's going to be helicopters and chopper gunners and airstrikes and artillery and... I feel like right now domination is ruined. So in the past... Domination would be one of the go-tos to get some score. If you want to go into Domination and try and kill Whore, which I tried to do. I was like, maybe I'll just not do the objective and I'll just kill Whore and see how that goes. If I can bring my score per minute up. It doesn't help because if your team isn't capturing the objectives, you can't kill Whore because the other team's slaughtering. Stay away from Domination. Unless you just want to be angry. I played a lot of Domination on my live stream. Uh, and I think that was a big part of why I was angry. Free for all. I don't, I mean, even if I get shot around corners a little bit, it doesn't happen quite as bad. It's not quite as, as egregious and awful. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Uh, I would encourage you guys to play some free for all. Share your thoughts below on, on what feels to you like the best investment of your time that you've played so far. What's been the most infuriating to you? <laughs> uh, I think this kind of addresses both. It helps you rank up faster and it's not quite as infuriating. Um, so share your guys' thoughts on what you've been doing. Uh, if you decide to do this, let me know how it goes, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Um, if you guys aren't the faithful around here, if you're not a minion, subscribe, join us, come back. We have fun. We have good times. If you guys aren't watching my story time series for the Black Ops campaign, oh my god, watch it. I'm just, I'm not one to like toot my own horn, and like I said, I've said this before, I don't tend to be the kind of person that laughs at my own jokes a bunch, but I'm re-watching my videos, and I'm losing my shit. Um, it's just such a, an 80s action cliche movie. It's fantastic. Go watch it. Okay, I'm done. Bye. Peace out.